Welcome, I'm Sarah Lawyer, Associate Curator at The Broad, and I'm happy to introduce you to our virtual opening of Invisible Sun, a special collection exhibition at The Broad. We can't wait until we're able to reopen our doors to the public and welcome you back to visit, but in the meantime, we're thrilled to share what we've been up to. We developed this exhibition over the summer in response to the dual pandemics of COVID-19 and systemic racism and the artworks included resonate with our unprecedented moment of rupture and unrest. Hi, my name is Ed Shad, curator at The Broad in Los Angeles. Of intense interest in Invisible Sun is societal connectedness between individuals, between individuals and their governments, between countries and their peoples. The first gallery in the exhibition features the work of two artists, who experienced firsthand the losses of another devastating pandemic, AIDS. David Wanarovich was known for his paintings, film, poetry, and activism in regards to the AIDS crisis. Central to Wanarovich's work was the insidious idea that AIDS could be ignored, that since the disease disproportionately affected the gay community, as well as underserved communities, that governments in the United States and around the world could be slow to recognize the threat of the virus. Wanarovich worked for much of his life to combat this ignorance and hate. And he is paired in this exhibition with the mournful paintings of Ross Blechner, who uses the language of abstraction to evoke memorials for those who were lost during the onset of AIDS around the world. The exhibition's title, Invisible Sun, is taken from artist Julie Meritu's abstract painting. Invisible Sun is a title that signals both the grounding constancy of the star at the center of the solar system and the wavering faith when it is absent. While many of the works on view reflect the struggles of our world, many also offer resilience, healing, and recovery. Invisible Sun presents works by artists who confront this imperfect world and in doing so find possibility, reflection, and perhaps even light. The Broad Collection is uniquely suited to think through these issues because it's a collection that has been formed over the past 50 years. It focuses on contemporary artists and it celebrates artists' unique perspectives on our world. We're also happy to be showing 24 out of 59 works for the first time at the museum, which will be the focus of future digital programming. Much in the same way that Wanarovich and Blechner come to bear on COVID and its losses, so does work by Keith Haring Leon Golub and Sue Ko stepped forward from the Broad collections of the 1980s to examine social justice. These painters join Los Angeles artist Mark Bradford in a space united in work that addresses governmental power. Keith Herring's reflections on unchecked greed and capitalism and Sue Ko's meditations on government neglect and rising poverty dialogue directly with Bradford's work regarding the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina and police violence in the United States.
another gallery in Invisible Sun expands this discussion across governmental borders and to the global web of economics and how it impacts the relationship between countries. Oscar Murillo produces his work in a way that mimics supply chains, marketplaces, and the individuals that these mechanisms impact. He is in dialogue with artists like Luke Toymans, William Kentridge, Hans Hacke, and others who bring post-colonial narratives and the dynamics of global power into view. A grouping of Kentridge's drawings comes from his 2011 film, Other Faces, detailing a day in the life of contemporary Johannesburg in the aftermath of apartheid South Africa. On a wall nearby can be found Luke Toymans' painting, William Robertson, a meditation on the Enlightenment and some of the ways the specter of its beliefs continue to exist today. Some galleries present the work of a single artist, such as Glenn Ligon, Julie Maritou, and Jenny Holzer. We have several of Glenn Ligon's works on view that take inspiration from writers like Gertrude Stein, James Baldwin, Zora Neale Hurston, and Ralph Ellison. Ligon's iconic Double America II is a neon that's coated in black so that the light shines behind it, with two Americas, one upright and one upside down, showing multiple interconnected experiences of the country. Julie Maritou's gallery includes a suite of prints called Six Bardos. They're inspired by a trip to China, the six stages of the soul between death and reincarnation, described in the Tibetan Book of the Dead, and the Bardos of Yoga. Jenny Holzer's immersive installation, Under a Rock, from 1986, has 10 black granite benches and three LED signs, and acts in part as a memorial. There's lettering on the benches that make them look similar to gravestones. We also have several galleries pairing two artists. For example, a gallery featuring work by Alexander Calder and El Anatsui. Both artists combine abstraction and motion in their works. Calder, through his mobiles, works made of metal parts that hang and twist into countless configurations that he likens to poetry. Anatsui's large-scale works are made from recycled materials like bottle caps, materials that hold the history and effects of colonialism, slavery, and global trade. They hang from the wall like tapestries, and each time they're installed, they're draped differently. Anatsui expressly connects this mutability to life. Through movement, Anatsui and Calder's works are metaphors for opportunity, freedom, and possibility. Another gallery pairs the work of Ray Smith and Larry Pittman. Smith was born in a border town on the Texas-Mexico border, and he has split his time between Mexico and the US since the 80s. He's influenced by early experiences studying fresco painting in Mexico, and by Mexican muralists such as Jose Clemente Orozco.
Pittman, who's based in LA, also includes graphic, figurative imagery in his paintings. Both artists take on political subject matter in their large-scale multi-panel works. Smith takes on the dirty war in Mexico of the 1960s and 70s, and Pittman's work is part party, part chaos, somewhere between the Pride Parade and the 1992 Los Angeles uprising. Many more cross-generational groupings of artists and topics appear in Invisible Sun. Carrie James Marshall is on display with artist Ellen Gallagher. Paul Pfeiffer with Thomas Struth. And David Hammonds with Julie Murray too. We have paired an extraordinary artist new to the Brogue collections, Nathaniel Mary Quinn, with artists who have been in the collection for a very long time, Cindy Sherman and George Kondo. Using portraiture, these three artists explore human conditions of memory, of loss, and persistence in the face of hardship. We certainly hope you enjoy our efforts and find much to think about when we are next together at The Broad. Please watch The Broad social media channels for future digital programs that will explore these artist practices and artwork in more depth. Thank you.